Hey, YouTubers. Down to my little special place and my little tracker off-road deal. And I, today I'm going to show you something about a special lure. This is really kind of a cool lure. And I'll show you the lure in just a second. Get all my tackle out here. Get my rods out. And we're going to give you the ABCs today of chatterbait fishing. We're going to show you a little bit about just what it takes to catch bass from Connecticut to California on the chatterbait. I'm going to put these tackle boxes down and just show you what I'm talking about. I got a whole bunch of different chatterbaits, starting with some white ones. Here's a, my, one of my favorite green pumpkin half ounce. Let me just show you what it is. And I know you've seen me fishing these things a lot. There, it's, a, it's a vibrating jig. It's nothing more than a jig with a blade. And I like to jig fish and I like to worm fish and you can fish a chatterbait somewhat similar to a, to a, to a jig or a worm. The only difference is you can also see a swimming along. A regular jig or worm, you'd throw it out there and you'd let it stick to the bottom. And a regular jig or worm, you just lift it up and kind of move it along slow and easy. And, and you can do that some with a chatterbait. But if you look at this chatterbait, it's for, it's for swimming. I can make a long cast with it, come right past an ambush point. It could be a point of, of rocks, it could be a dock, it could be a tree, it could be a point of grass. And just kind of slowly reel it along. Bam, you load up on it big time. Now this last couple months, I've really had a really great experience with, uh, with chatterbaits. I've caught several bass down in Mexico in the 10 pound class. I've caught several more bass here in Florida in the seven and eight pound class. I've really had a great, great year on this chatterbait. Let, just, let me just show you a little bit of what, about this, what a chatterbait consists of. This is the half ounce a chatterbait and it's the jackhammer series it's the premium uh, model and they have several different prices and, and, and price points and models and, and say z-man has the patent on what they call the chatterbait now there's other bladed jigs out there there's a whole bunch of them 10 or 15 different people make a bladed jig but they don't call them a chatterbait they call them a bladed jig okay so we're going to call this one a chatterbait because that's what it is it's a chatterbait and z-man makes basically all the ones for Bass Pro Shop that Bass Pro Shop sells, that's made by a Z-Man and it's a chatterbait. And uh, then they make uh, the regular series for, it's about a five or six dollar lure uh, in the half ounce model like this one. And then they make the Jackhammer series. Now the Jackhammer series is a premium series. It's handmade, it has a little bit tighter wobble, uh, it's, just a, it's just better built by a little bit and it'll, it'll, it catches fish just a little teeny bit better. Almost all the pros that I know use the Jackhammer series, but it costs like $15, it costs more. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you the two ways that I have of retrieving a chatterbait. You know, it's an ambush, you can throw it to an ambush point like those lily pads, and you can throw it there and just kind of work it right through there, let it drop to the bottom and lift your rod up, kind of like a worm fish, and just kind of ease it along. Okay, that's one really good way of, of, say, fishing an ambush point. Now, when I lift it up and drop it back down, it's like a jig. It's like a worm. The fish hit it as it sinks back down. That's the main time they hit it. And so be a line watcher. It's so, so important when you lift, lift it up and drop it back down that you're watching that line. And then uh, also I put a little bit of back pressure on it. I just keep just a little bit of tension on the line so that when it hits it, I'll feel a little tick. Okay, now let's talk about the line and the setup because that's really, really a big part of it. <clears throat> Brett Height has won three or four great big giant tournaments. He's from California. Actually, he's from Arizona, I'm sorry. But Brett has really set the world on fire and he's developed this Jackhammer series, for example, for Z-Man. And he's won three or four really big tournaments on the, on the chatterbait. And what, I'm going to show you his setup. This is Brett Height's setup. This is what he personally gave me this line. He personally gave me this lure. He personally set me up, Brett Height did, two weeks ago, well, but I've known him for a long time. But what he recommends, okay, this is what he recommends. This is 20 pound fluorocarbon, 20 pound. Look, 
Fluorocarbon is a little bit more difficult to cast, but it has less stretch than monofilament. It has more sensitivity than monofilament, and it's, it's all but invisible in the water. It also sinks more. So when you use fluorocarbon, your line goes a little deeper because it sinks more than the monofilament. It has a little bit more sensitivity again, a little less stretch. It's just a little bit tougher line, but it is harder to cast. That's the only downside of fluorocarbon. You have to have your reel adjusted just right with a little bit of back pressure on your, on your uh, brakes. You have to keep your thumb on the spool and you have to, you know, you have to not let the thumb off the spool. And that's really an important kind of way of casting a chatterbait. Now, there's a second way to retrieve that, and it's the way that I like it a lot, and that is I just kind of slow roll it. Now, what's slow rolling? When you're talking about spinnerbait fishing, you're talking about slow rolling. Okay, what's slow rolling? That's just where the blade of the spinnerbait just slowly rolls along. So all you're doing when you slow roll a chatterbait is about the same thing. You're just holding it down, it kind of the, put, put the rod in the strike position, and just reel it fast enough if you really have good sensitive line and a good sensitive rod, like I use this good sensitive Emperor Series rod, I can feel that blade. Dunk, 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 dunk. And that's kind of the slow roll complement of, of, of a chatterbait. It's kind of like slow rolling a spinnerbait. Just slowing it down, barely having that blade wobble back and forth. Dunk, 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 dunk. And just keep it kind of easing along. Hey, last weekend, I went with my, my grandson, uh, Reed, Reed Martin. He's in college, and we got this chatterbait that's very wet. In fact, this chatterbait right here was one of them I used, half ounce model. We were throwing it in little patches of eel grass, and we are just throwing it out there as far as we could. We're kind of holding the rod in the strike position, and we're just slowly reeling along. Bam, I catch one almost eight pounds. Bam, Reed catches one about seven pounds. We had a beautiful limit. We almost won the tournament. We had two more great big ones up to the boat, and we one, one of them was about seven or eight pounds. It would have won the tournament. We got away, but anyway, we came in fourth. Came in fourth place. A lot of big fish that day. But anyway, we're really on, on, on fire on the chatterbait deal. The week before, I was down in Mexico, and I don't know how many fish. I caught a couple hundred fish on the chatterbait. Okay, let me just show you a few different trailer combinations and a few different size combinations of the chatterbait himself. Okay, let's start off with a, a 3 8 ounce. And I have some white ones just so that you can see what's going on here. Now here is a, a lighter chatterbait. It's a 3 8 ounce model. And it, just w watching it in the water, I'm just going to kind of let you just see what it does. It's, you can see the white really well and you can see that blade moving along. I just want to let you see that because that's a really a big part of this whole system. The blade really wobbles around. You can see it really kind of just really working. You can see it really, really popping along and hopping along. Okay, that, that's a 3 8 of it. Now that doesn't move real hard or fast, but with this fluorocarbon line and a sensitive enough rod, you can feel that blade wobbling. And that's so important to have that blade wobbling. It's wobbling right now, it's wobbling, it's wobbling. I'm just running around slow and easy. Again, that's a 3 8 of an ounce chatterbait, 3 8 of an ounce. And it happens to be a trailer that some of the guys use it at Okeechobee, but it's not really my choice of trailers. Let me show you my better choice of trailers. But let's just look at trailers for a second and see what we have. Now, I'm running a 3 8 of an ounce chatterbait right here. Let's go to a 5-inch swim sinko. Now, watch just, I want to just watch what happens. I'm going to cut some of that off, about an inch and a half of it off. Watch my teeth. Okay, I'm going to take this trailer off that I had on there. And now I'm going to take that swim sinko, about three inches of it, and I'm going to put it on the hook. Oh, you're going to see something really cool. This, this lights them up, son. This is the deal. Now watch this chatterbait. Woo! Man, you're talking about something going. Look at that tail. Look at that tail. Look at the tail. Tail is way more active. Way more active a tail. And that, that, that is a big, big part of it. That's a real big part of it. Okay? Now, speaking of active tails, there's another combination of tails that I really like, and that's a tail that Brett Height himself came up with. Let's talk about these tails that Brett has. I don't have the light colored ones 
These are <clears throat> these are the new uh, Kickin' Zakos. It's a four-inch model and it's a sample. It's hadn't come out on the market yet. It's a brand new deal. And I got some of them. I had some white ones and I, I couldn't find them. And I, I used them all last week and I couldn't find my white ones. But just to show you what this does, this does a whole different ball game. I, I, again, I do have white ones. I just couldn't find them. Let's take that Kickin' Zako. Zako and let's put it on this white head. Just so that just all I'm doing is showing you what the trailer does, okay? I'm gonna put it in with this up top here, just like this. Come through the top, come through the top, bear it right through here. Okay, now watch this, this combination. Of course, it's not the right color, but watch the tail. The tail is a big deal. The tail, if you can see it, uh, you can't see the tail. That going on. The tail is kicking like crazy, but you can't see it. Wish I had the white tails. Ah, uh, the water's too dark. But let me just tell you, I don't have the right color tail to show you. That tail does the job. That's the new kicking Zaco that Brett Hyde has developed. And this is a, the perfect size for the 3 8 ounce, for the half ounce, for the 5 8 ounce, even up to the 3 quarter ounce. It's, it's a perfect complement for that. Okay, let's go, uh, let's go to another combination here. Let's look at another at another color. Now here's the the, the regular Zaco. Now here, this isn't the kicking Zaco. They may have Zacos now for three or four years. And these Zacos, this is the one that has this regular swimming tail, this Zaco. And maybe if I show you this, maybe we can see this swim a little better. This is a, the actual tail that Brett Height won two of his big giant tournaments on and that's the, the Zaco with the yeah you can see that tail a little bit better that's a, that tail shows up some I couldn't see the other one it, it doesn't kick the, the new tail the new kicking tail has more vibration that has some vibration and it's really really good but it's still not as as it doesn't kick and vibrate as much as the as the new one but hey whether it kicks or vibrates or what it does this has won so many tournaments. It's just, it's really been a big deal. And the other thing about the, the Zaco, it's pretty heavy. It's a little small swim bait. It helps you cast a long way. I could really make a long cast that way. Again, I, about half the time, I do a slow roll with it. Just barely reeling along. I can just barely feel that blade vibrate. I'm kind of in a strike position now. If you notice, my rod's kind of low. I'm kind of ready to set the hook. And I'm just kind of just easing along. And I got this rod. And also, see, this is the big, what they call a cushion button. And I keep it in my side. And I keep the rod here like this. And so when I get in this position, one hits it. Well, I can load up. See how I can just, I mean, if, if one, there's not a fish here. But that's all right. But it's, the point is, if, if there were a fish to bite, I'd be in the strike position right here. Rod low, just ready to go, and a rod a little less than a 45. This I can feel that I can feel that Zaco, I can feel that blade just moving. It's just the perfect, it's the perfect thump. It's thumping back and forth. It's doing really good. Okay. Let me just show you another combination. <laughs> We're getting some combinations going here. Let's show you on this bigger, slightly bigger one. This is a little bit heavier model. It's a 5 8 ounce model. And here's a, here's a trailer that I've just fallen in love with. It's called the Cowboy. Okay, here's a Cowboy. Now this is a dark colored one. And you know, around here in South Florida, we use, we use the black and blue colors. I'm just showing you the white one now because the white one just showing up better in the water. But in reality, like last week, we used the black and blue. And the black and blue one in both half ounce and uh, three eighths of an ounce, the chatterbaits, that's like on Lake Okeechobee just this last week. Well, let me put the cowboy on. I'll just show you how, how this goes. This is really a kicking deal here. This thing really, really cuts it up. Now again, I don't know if you can see that tail we can see the tail really good. And look at that cowboy tail on this green pumpkin that I like so well. You can't see it real well. 
But there is one way to make it more visible, and that is by using some spiked products. And that's something that's really, really important. I use, uh, I use color enhancing all the time. And one thing you can do, I got orange, I got reds, I got all sorts of different colors, but a standard color, really standard color in, in a spiked thing, is a uh, is the chartreuse. Now what you do with the chartreuse is is you dip it just a little bit in the, in the tail. You tip the, the tail down in there best you can to get the get the eye up on the tail. And that should that should do it right there. Now you want to watch you saw how hard it was to see? Now watch this. I'm telling you folks this makes it a lot more visible. This chartreuse color really, really lights it up. And sometimes in the, for, the water's a little dingy, these chartreuses are really, look at that, you can see the chartreuse coming along really, really good. You can really, really, really see the chartreuse. Look at those tails. This is a little quarter ounce. That's just a little bitty thing. If you notice the head is just really small, a quarter ounce, that's perfect for Lake Okeechobee and it's like in, in that much water and the water's just, just a foot deep. That's great. Okay, now you go, here's a 3 8 ounce in kind of a white. And that's a, a Bass Pro Shop, but it's still a chatter bait. It's still a chatter bait that, that Z-Man makes for the thing. It's the same thing, it's the same actual bait. And then we get up, we got, graduate up a little higher. That was 3 8 This is a 3 8 and a black and blue. Okay, 3 8 and a black and blue. And now we're going to a, uh, a half ounce, the half ounce, and that green pumpkin, just a half ounce. Well, anyway, chatterbaits is one of my go-to lures. It's one of my favorite lures. It's a difficult thing to master. Hey, but once you master the chatterbait fishing, you'll have the time of your life and possibly catch the biggest bass of your life. Hey, listen, I post every Wednesday at uh, about 6 o'clock in the afternoon, and I, I also post uh, another video, which is usually fishing-oriented, on Sundays. And uh, then on Fridays, I do a what's happening, Roland, kind of a, it's a recap for the week. And uh, please keep watching. Hey, I love doing these, these videos, and we'll see you again soon.